he is getting away with this pretty easily. His viewers, a lot of them do not know what's going on and it's not their faults. I'm gonna continue to grow and continue to work on myself and admit when I'm wrong. You don't get to play kids games anymore. You don't need to attract more kid fans anymore because you've broken that trust. You have to be some type of evil to f use your mental illness to keep people quiet. So this dude's ego is through the roof. I will be better. I will continue to use my platform for good. I want this space, this channel, this area to be somewhere that people can come in and feel welcomed and they can leave with a smile on their face and be happy. That's all that I want. When you're a successful YouTuber with a massive audience, whether you started out as a regular individual living an average life Please make it stop. Or if you have experience being in the entertainment industry, you have a new and important responsibility. Now that word can sound intimidating, but it's literally the easiest task ever, you see. Your responsibility is to not prey on underage fans. Sounds simple, right? Well, apparently for a plethora of YouTubers and influencers, that seems too complicated. Being a decent human being is just too much work. It's so much easier to just take advantage of 17 year olds on the internet and blame it on your mental struggles when you get caught, at least according to Minilad. This is going to be a nauseating topic, but it's one that absolutely deserves as many voices talking about it as possible. He is getting away with this pretty easily. His viewers, a lot of them do not know what's going on, it's not their faults. Minilad is a popular gamer, vlogger, and influencer with over 5 million subscribers on YouTube, over 1 million Twitter followers, another million on Instagram, and almost a million on Twitch. It's safe to say that this guy has a pretty substantial following across all of his platforms. Many of his followers also happen to be in a younger age demographic due to the content he makes which revolves around Minecraft and other various kid-friendly games. In the beginning of the summer, on June 23rd, a Twitter user by the name of Haley made a public statement about her experiences with Mini Lad, going into detail about how Mini Lad manipulated her and how he had inappropriate conversations with her, talking about his private parts and how it pleases him to hear people compliment them. Mini Lad also allegedly sent Haley pictures of his lump, knowing that she was under the age of 18. Haley also claims that Mini Lad knew that while she was a minor, she had a crush on him. As if this couldn't get any worse, Haley also shares that once she found out that Mini Lad was also doing even worse with another minor, he tried to scare her into silence by weaponizing the mental health of himself and his own fans, alluding to the idea that if this little secret got out, he'd harm himself and his fans would do the same. Was saying to me, if Ash ever came up about this, she would be killing. She would be the person who's responsible for killing thousands of people because of if people found out who he was and fans who count on his videos found out about him, they would kill themselves. Another user by the name of Ash also came out about her experiences with him on the same day. Many lad had taken things much farther with Ash than Hallie. There was a higher amount of inappropriate conversation, nude photos were exchanged, and Many lad had even attempted to meet up with Ash in person to take her V-card. He would send countless disgusting texts to Ash, first lying saying that he thought she was 18, but later admitting that he did in fact know she was 17 years old. This sparked a massive uproar within Mini Lad's community and for good reason, as they have provided evidence showing that not only did Mini Lad have highly inappropriate conversations with these girls who were underage, but he also sent and requested nude photos from one of them. Here are some of the messages Craig, otherwise known as Mini Lad, had sent to Ash. Ash is in the red and Craig is obviously blue. My bae, you're my bae. Hi bae, hi bae. There's no bae Snapchat sticker, I'm sad. Love you bae, love you too bae. Why is my Snapchat so broken? Then he says, I'm blank, bae. Part of me is refraining from saying this because of demonetization and the other part of me just doesn't want to say it because I feel sick to my stomach reading a message like this between a grown man and a teenager. I'm sorry, bae. I wish I could help. Can I blank for you, bae? Now the next few screenshots you're about to see were not posted in any particular order on Ash's Twitter. So with context clues, I attempted to do my best 
used in order to reorganize them so that it makes sense, although I am not positive that this is the exact order that they were in. Followed you, you're hot AF. Thank you, OMFG, however, you are hot as well, so it's even. We could be hot together, We. I still can't believe that's why you followed me. That's so funny, because I was like, oh, what the heck, I didn't do anything. Your eyes are incredible. My D rose out of my pants and clicked follow. Again, just remember that he is talking to a minor. You said when you were d he would send me a little something. I didn't even mean for that message to be such a mess, OMG, but I'm so nervous. Do it, I believe in you. For me? All right, listen, I'm so comfy, maybe I don't wanna get up. It's been weeks, I'm sad. Do it, it's on your snap. Holy F, you're stunning. Are you lying? No, my God. And now it's gone forever. God, you're so effing hot, I can't. They're not even that good, OMG, thank you though. They are. Maha, <laughs> I won't lie, those were really fun to take. There we go, that's embarrassing how long that took me. You're all good, what are you going to say when you meet him. What will you want me to say? I want you to say how in this, ugh, this gets disgusting and even reading this out loud is just awful. I know you can't see my face, but just know that on the other side of the screen, I am sitting somewhere wanting to blow chunks in my porcelain throne because I have laid eyes upon these DMs. I just want you to know that. I want you to say how big he is. I have a kink for people saying how big my D is. Like if you were to compliment how big my D is, I would get so blank so fast. It wouldn't take me long to blank at all. Are you kidding me? Your D is huge. That's so easy. It's actually massive. I'm just going to keep bugging you about it because if I was a potential boyfriend and he asks for a picture, he would be annoyed because you're taking a while. That's why I'm here to help you. I'm poking you with a metaphorical stick. It's a good thing, not a bad thing. I'm blank, but I didn't need to tell you that. You know me by this stage. Unfortunately, I do, SMH, but I know I could blank it. I don't know if she meant to say fix or another word, I don't need to be tested. I'd rather send them because you or whoever wants them enjoys them rather than send them just because you're preparing me. Part of this message is cut off, but it says, rarely have minutes to myself. I like to spend them relaxing, not stressing over that, but I get it and I'm going to try my hardest to get some to you. I promise next time I get a second, I'ma do it. I know, don't worry, just preparing you for the future. It's very clear in these messages that Mini Lad not only had intent to exchange inappropriate photos with a person under the age of 18, which is illegal in the United States, but he also alluded to the idea that he wanted to meet up with her and do things with her in person, combined with her own statement saying that he in fact did want to meet up and take her V card. This shows a very, very disgusting disgusting, reprehensible intent, and he knew what he was doing. This wasn't his mental health. This wasn't him being in a dark place. This is a scumbag that needs to have their internet privileges revoked, and he needs to be put in a jail cell. This is there's no other word for it. There was then a Twitter user by the name of Miles who shared their story about how Minnie Lad was a host at a camp which she attended called Camp 17. In her story, she shares how Craig made inappropriate comments about her and some of the other girls while she was 13 years old. In her Twitter thread, she provided a testimonial from another person who claimed to have attended the camp and underneath this thread, another person claimed to have attended this camp and that they've witnessed this behavior taking place. Place. Craig addressed this in his response video to the accusations denying anything uncomfortable had taken place because counselors and parents were present, so how could anything happen? However, Miles points out in her response to his response, stating that he did not specifically deny making any inappropriate comments. There's even a short thread posted from Craig's ex-girlfriend saying, No, Craig didn't arm me, but it was an extremely toxic and manipulative relationship. He messaged me and a few of my friends to make sure I didn't say anything about him specifically. He wanted me to clarify, so here you go. Sammy, can you please clarify that what you said on Twitter isn't about me? I know you've had issues in the past with your boyfriends before me, but you need to make sure that people know it's not about me and about your exes beforehand. Hi, I'm so sorry to bug you like this, but Sammy has me blocked on Twitter and she's tweeting about her ex-boyfriend stuff, which I know about. Can you please tell her to clarify it's not me in question? Look, Craig, I told you when you first started dating her that I wouldn't forgive you if you hurt her. You've hurt her emotionally and psychologically, and you know that. I'm going to let her say what she wants because it's her right to do so as a woman. Hey man, I'm sorry to bug you like this, but Sammy has me blocked on Twitter and she is tweeting about her ex-boyfriend stuff, which I know about. Can you please tell her to clarify that it's not me in question? Hey, 
Craig, it's okay. I'll pass that along to her. I'm just freaking out because people are starting to accuse me of R, which Sammy and I both know wasn't a thing. I'm happy for her to speak up on whatever she wants, but she can't be vague with this stuff because it's dangerous. Mini Lad's reaction appears to be a response to a tweet first made by Hallie, which states, I think I'm going to be honest with my experiences. It's hard not to be silent when it still to this day bothers me. I don't care if I lose friends because I decided to be brave. I'm not sure yet though if I should say anything. Gotta make sure I'm fully able to do it. There was a time when I was underage and taken advantage of by someone who has a pretty big platform. I'm too scared to speak over it, which sucks. Sammy, Mini Lad's ex-girlfriend, responded with, I got your back, queen. It's also very interesting because Mini Lad had also messaged Hallie at the same time frame which this was posted. Before I exposed Craig, I was tweeting out about how I was scared I was gonna about to expose a big influencer. It was it was fun. Gary, I I'm a person who vents on the internet. Should I? Maybe not. I I don't know, but he totally knew I was talking about him and he definitely did panic. He was talking to some people trying to see if they could find out if I was going to be talking about him. And then the audacity of this mother. He came in my text messages and said, Hallie, I saw your tweets. Are you okay? You always check up on me, so I wanted to check up on you. As soon as I saw that, I knew I needed to come out about him. Just, you know, if you know him, you know what his motive was through that, just those words. He was going to see if I was going to come out about him, and he was going to see if he could manipulate me that night and guilt, just make me feel guilty and not come out about him after years of holding this shit in. In Sammy's thread, she also states, I've deleted hundreds of texts similar to these after I moved on, so I only have a few scavenged together. I have even more screenshots of my own DM support group, but those don't include text screenshots. I've pushed so hard to try and make it work. You want to break up with me because I called you out on a lie? That doesn't matter to me. It's been a gradual decline for a long time now, and every little thing has started to affect me a lot. I'm not happy at all. I should have had the best year of my life with tour and creator of the year and everything, but I look back on last year as a flop. I may as well be doing this shit on my own. Okay, schedule an appointment. We clearly need a third party to moderate things like this. I lied so you'd take me seriously. When you get home, we'll sort this. Yes, with a therapist. I don't want a therapist. You said it was a good idea before. That's when I had a bit of hope left in this relationship. Let's not do this now. I'm not breaking up with you over text. I'm going to bed. Have a good last day with your family. Okay then, keep me updated. I still love you. That's good at least. LOL. We had another fit about therapy last night before bed, which he now backed out of therapy and is convinced it's just a judge picking who is crazy slash who to side with. I was so tired and sleepy and done, so that's why I typed LOL. That last screenshot is extremely interesting because it shows a pattern of him saying that he's going to attend therapy and then not attending therapy. And up until right now, there is still a lot of debate as to whether or not he's truly serious about therapy, even though that's one of the things that he said he is doing to try and become better for his audience. I outlined it in my original tweet back in June at the bottom saying that I will be working on myself and I will be attending therapy from now and on into the future, and a lot of people deem that to be untrue, but I wanted to be here on record saying that since then, I have been going to therapy every single week, and I will continue to go to therapy every single week. Mini Lad was in his 20s while these girls were 16 to 17 years old during the time that this had taken place. It's important to note that while each state has their own age of consent laws differing between the ages of 16 to 18, in the United States, federal law prohibits the exchange of nude photos with anybody under the age of 18, regardless of what state you live in. So in the United States, any inappropriate photos of anybody under the age of 18 is legally classified as CP, meaning that what Mini Lad has done and what he has admitted to doing was a crime. And just so you're aware, your mental health does not excuse you for this legally or morally. Mini Lad has admitted to this, by the way. He surprisingly confessed that yes, he did do this. And yes, he did use mental health as an excuse, saying some of the most abysmal and outrageous things to rationalize it. Hi, everyone. 
everyone! Many of you are probably aware by now of the allegations recently made online about my behavior a few years ago. I have read through everything that was said and shared and understand how unacceptable my actions were. I take full responsibility for the inappropriate texts and messages I sent. I regret having said or sent anything that made anyone uncomfortable or upset. I am truly and deeply sorry for what I did. I absolutely should have done what was necessary at the time, and that was seeking professional help, realizing that my actions were completely unacceptable, and working to change my behaviors from the inside out. Moving forward, I fully commit to working on myself, including going to therapy, rethinking and changing some of my life choices, and personally apologizing to those who I have harmed. I know it's hard to believe, and I totally get it. I haven't given you a reason to trust me, and I know I need to earn it, but that's on me to prove to you. I know there's no right my wrongs here, and I want to express again how sorry I am to the people I have hurt and the fans I have let down. I have a long road of personal searching ahead of me, so that's my focus now. I will be back when the time is right. Take care of yourselves. Craig Thompson slash Mini Lad. There is also evidence that he not only used the mental health card as an excuse to his following, but also tried to heavily manipulate people into silence after the truth began to slip between the cracks. He would use his depression to plan the seed of worry within the minds of those affected as a way to say, hey, don't expose me. If you do, I might just do something permanent to myself. Now, of course, I am paraphrasing here, but that's the takeaway from this considering these messages. Here are some of the messages he sent to somebody trying to get them to silence Ash, who was the girl he had been highly inappropriate with when she was at the age of 17. These screenshots were taken from Haley's video. Mini Lad says, can you talk to her? Tell her that I'm not who I was when I was younger. Tell her about my attempt. They say, sure, I'll do my best. He then goes on to say, keep me posted. I'm really scared. I'm down to talk to them if need be. Later adding, I'm going to tell my agent about this. I'm getting ready for the end. Thank you for being on this journey with me. We're trying really hard to help. It's so hard. I'll always be with you, Craig. He responds with, I probably won't be here. And this is him alluding to the idea that he is going to end himself over this situation. He even uses language like, my career is in their hands, attempting to pass off the blame of his career potentially ending because of this onto the people exposing him rather than himself for being the one that partook in these actions. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. He is using his mental health to not only try to excuse what he had already done, but to manipulate another person into being silent about it because he knows that he can use it as a fear tactic and make that person think he's going to hurt himself or worse. Hi everyone, I hope you've all been good. For the last month and a half, I've headed back to Northern Ireland and have been with family, focusing on bettering myself. It's been a crazy year for all of us and I needed to take time away to work on my mental health. I got myself into therapy and being back surrounded by family had been exactly what I needed. One important part of this ongoing journey has been unplugging from everything and taking a step back from the internet. Being in Los Angeles so far away from my family had taken taken its toll on me. This whole process has been an emotional journey, but a very necessary and eye-opening one, and I look forward to continuing down this path to a better and happier me. I want to say thank you to all of my fans who have been sending me supportive messages. I'm forever grateful to all of you. You help me more than you know. I'm hopeful for the future, I'm excited to get back to work, and I'm going to continue to work on myself from here on out every single day. I hope you all stay safe out there. See you all soon. Cheers, Craig. Once people realize that the majority don't care and don't know and brands keep working with me, it'll die faster. I think the subreddit should remain closed until after my comeback, which is this week. The drama will get drowned out by the new posts of recent videos. Yeah, that's understandable. I have so many banned words on my channel that people really have to try and say something stupid to get through. Whenever I come back and things return to normality, it'll be pushed down even farther. I'll be back making videos within the week. Yeah, it definitely sounds like he's taking the time to reflect on himself and work on being better. That's why two days ago from this recording, he uploaded this. You're lying there in bed. It's 12.30 a.m. You know you have work or school the next day, but you open up the app. There it is, TikTok. Ooh. For me, I've always wanted to use my platform for good. I've always wanted to portray a positive message here. 
And I know that there's nothing I can say right now that will change your guys' minds, and that's okay. But I hope, looking forward to the future, that whether it's in the coming weeks, or the coming months, or the coming years, that what I say right now, you can take as the truth. And what I say is this, I will be better. I will continue to use my platform for good. I want this space, this channel, this area to be somewhere that people can come in and feel welcome, then they can leave with a smile on their face and be happy. That's all that I want. I'm gonna to continue to grow and continue to work on myself and admit when I'm wrong. But here at the end of, I wanted to address the new stuff that's coming out and stick up for myself by telling the truth. I will be better. I will use my platform for good. You've exchanged inappropriate photos to minors knowing they were minors. You've taken advantage of people in unforgivable ways. You've severely damaged people using your platform and online presence as bait. You don't get a second chance. There is no redemption here. It's over. If a person did this at any job, especially Especially if their career involves kids the way that yours does considering that your target audience is very young They would be fired immediately their boss wouldn't say well He seems really sorry, and he's going to try better next time No, there is no next time if a person is arrested for the possession of CP They aren't even allowed access to the internet again in most circumstances There is no in the coming months weeks years, etc. You are not entitled to forgiveness What makes you think you're deserving of a second chance. The only thing you're deserving of is a jail cell. There are several people who were affected by this person while they were underage at the time, and this person is treating it like I was just in a dark place. This was just my mental health. I just thought that since I was about to kill myself anyway, I might as well go down swinging. Who thinks like that? Who is this disgusting? This person is still recording videos online. This person is still making content and pretending none of this ever happened. He left the United States, he went back home to his country, and he is trying to avoid consequence. I am not the law, I cannot go arrest somebody, but what I can say is especially if you are basically admitting to what happened, we can use our voice to say that we do not want you on this platform. This is a danger to young people online. This is horrifying, this is disgusting. Please let me know your thoughts on this. Think that Mini Lad is a disgusting creep. I just hope I'm not alone here in the thought that it just seems like every other day somebody else comes out with a disgusting story about how another person who is famous online is a predator. A Patreon supporter of mine, a wonderful person named Magic Sloth, gave me the idea to start shouting out people on days that I don't have any like sponsorships or promotion of any kind. And I thought that was a wonderful idea. So today I wanna to shout him out for it, Magic Sloth. He is awesome. He is very, very supportive. He's great, very chill guy. And uh, thank you so much for giving me the idea to do this. And with that, I also wanna say thank you to my two biggest Patreon supporters, Miss Tanisha and Lewis. Thank you so very, very much. Do you follow me on Twitter and on Instagram? I post a lot of Q&As on Instagram. I'm thinking about doing some live stream Q&As, maybe. Let me know your thoughts on that. Um, and follow me on Twitter because that's where I'm most interactive with everybody and where I put polls sometimes and where I ask for video suggestions. So please make sure you follow me on there before I take a break from it again because it's a, also a terrible platform. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Once again, let me know your thoughts on this. I'll see you later.